Hallelujah. Glory to God. Such a sweet presence in the house of the Lord. How many of you can feel it? It's so tangible. I think we can cut it with a knife. And um, the Lord bless the choir. Can we just really jam our hands together for them? Um, you see, it gets to a stage in your life where a song is not just because it's popular. A song is a reflection of your heart. A song is not just because it sounds nice and it's the reigning thing. It's because this is what you are trying to communicate in words to God. And I'm blessed with, I'm, I'm just thankful to God that we have a choir that daily knows how to capture the essence of our hearts and relate it to God. So let's just jam our hands together for the gift of God that we have in this house. Hallelujah. Um, bid your neighbor welcome. Tell them welcome to the presence of the Lord. Maybe when you started worship, they had not come. And now you have a neighbor, but bid them welcome. Tell them welcome. How are you? You could pay a compliment. Um, say, hi, you're looking good. You are looking better today than you were last week. How many of us remember that? You are looking better today than you were last week. If you are also online, you know what? Do something different. Chat on the comment section and say, hey, I don't see you, but I sense that you are looking good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, God has a word for us. And um, I just pray that the unfolding of his word will give light. And it will give understanding to every simple heart in the name of Jesus. And when I walked in here, I started to have a knee pain. And um, I started to ask God, okay, what's this about? And he said I should pray for anybody that came here sick. Now, I didn't know you were coming. I had a very strong knee pain. I was trying to shake it off. It was really painful. And as worship started to go on, the Lord took it away. If you need healing, just you don't need to stand. You don't need to come. Just raise your hand. Father, Lord, every heart that is here, we ask, oh God, that you heal them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we believe that you are a healer. We believe that you sent your word and it healed us of all our diseases. So today we enact your word that says, by your stripes we have been made whole. And we put an end to every sickness in the name of Jesus. Long-standing, definitive, uncurable, whatever the name has come beside that sickness. Today, the name you start to bear is healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, that the, the fragrance of your presence, it starts to decorate everyone that is here and it starts to fix everything that the enemy has tried to steal in their bodies, in their minds, in their hearts, in the name of Jesus. I decree over anyone that has any knee pain, knee pain, I decree that your bones start to function properly now in the name of Jesus. Anything that has to do with your joints, your bones, your marrows, I, I decree healing for you now in the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord is able to heal, to seek, and to save. I decree your healing now in the name of Jesus. You are not going back with that sickness in the name of Jesus. Your healing is permanent in the name of Jesus. You are testifying in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Um, how many of us remember last week? I think um, last week was such a... I went back to the messages and God, I was laughing. I was laughing at some of the things that we, you know, we, we were talking about. Um, how many of us also joined feed? I want to encourage you, please um, take very seriously some of the things that we do here. It, it may seem as though the vessels that God brings these words by are familiar vessels, but don't make a mistake to be familiar with the anointing. There may be people that you can call on a first name basis because they allow you, but do not be familiar with the anointing they carry. There must be a place where you draw the line between Olumide and Pastor Olumide. Because the things that he says through me are not the things that I engineered myself. It is he that wants to speak. So please take advantage of every platform that we have to share. Because God really speaks heavily through those platforms. And um, Sister Shafika was talking about forgiveness. How many of us remember? And it was such an amazing word. And um, it's still all part of the umbrella of spirituality that we are going to be talking about. And today I'm going to be continuing on spirituality. Last week we looked at the four um, checks to spiritual maturity. How many of us remember that? And we said that the first one was what? Let me not put you on the spot. The degree of the conformity to the image and the character of God. 
The second one was what? The depth of comprehension of God's principles. I'm also checking my, my book, so that's why the book is there. You don't need to be a superman. Go back to your notes. Hallelujah. The third is the outward workings of power and the ability of God. And the fourth one was love. Hallelujah. I know you guys love love. Right? Hallelujah. So we're going to be looking at today, um, and I want us to go and start with Genesis 1, verse 26, just to see what the Bible says in Zebiningin, in the beginning. Genesis 1, verse 26, it says, let us make human beings in our image to be like ourselves. So the first thing God is saying about spirituality is, spirituality is actually your DNA. Who you are is a spiritual being. What God created or who God created was one like him. At this time, Jesus had not come to the earth. So what God was saying was the image that you carry is the image of the Godhead. Was the, image of the, was the splitting image of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit, of God the Father. That's your DNA. That is who God sees. He sees himself. So that gives us context into the definition of spirituality. Spirituality now becomes you embracing the true nature of God. That is spirituality. You embracing what? The true nature of God. Or you could say, embracing the true nature of holiness and God-likeness. And it's only fair that we give the opposite, um, we give the definition of the opposite of spirituality, which is what? Canality. Canality is the embracing of the fallen state of man, making him enjoy the pleasures of sin and disobedience. That definition is leading with a lot of words. But what it says is you become, you start to embrace a fallen nature. Every time certain things happen and you embrace them because you feel you cannot do anything about it or you feel that you are limited or you feel that you are weak or you feel that you cannot attain, that's not the best of God. That's not what God has said concerning you. When you feel that you can suffer or you feel that life would end badly for you, that's the fallen state of man. That's not who you are. That it also happened to fellow humans does not mean it should happen to you. The understanding of who we are is what makes us demand certain things. Let me explain that. If I check your bag, 90% or almost every one of you have the keys to your apartment, yes or no? Come on. So what happens when you get to the door? You lay a demand on the door to open. Can you lay that demand on my door? Because you do not have the identity of the owner of the apartment, except I give it to you. So when you know who you are, it enables you to lay demands on who, on what you can become. So I am saved and delivered. An amazing song that the choir did last week. Because somebody has told me that that is who I am. I am reborn, I'm renewed, my life is in Christ. I can take that authority because God had shed his blood and he has risen on the cross of Calvary, giving me keys to what I am currently enjoying. And that, guys, is spirituality. That we can be sick and lay demand on long life and health and tie it by saying, in the name of Jesus is the access that you receive when you are a child of God. And that is being spiritual. Let's also understand a bit about spirituality. Let's open our Bibles to Romans 8. Romans 8 verse 1. I want to show you something. Popular scripture. For there is therefore now no more condemnation. Now it says that to say there is no condemnation. Meaning that there was I will need feedback so that we don't sleep off. Yeah. Seeming to say that there was condemnation. And the fallen state of man brought condemnation. It made us live lower than the image that we should represent. It was God seeing himself but not seeing himself clearly through you. It was God seeing that he has my form but he does not have my character. 
And that brought condemnation. Another person that brought condemnation was the devil. Because the Bible calls him the accuser of who? Now, the only reason he could not accuse Jesus was because the Bible says he came and he saw nothing in me. And that means to say that whenever we embrace sin, the devil can find something in us. So spirituality puts us in the posture whereby every time the devil comes, he finds nothing in you. And because he finds nothing in you, there is no basis for condemnation. He says there is therefore no condemnation for those who belong to Christ. Now you remember what I was telling you, you have the keys to your house but you have no keys to my house because I have not given it to you. So now, if we are all going home and I have an SUV and I say, you know what, I can take four people to my house and you follow me into my apartment or you follow me to my garage and I get to my parlor or I get to the door and I open it because the door responds to my key, everybody comes in even if you don't have a key. There is no condemnation on you because the partner or the company that you keep has eliminated the condemnation. And it's Jesus. The condemnation does not attack the people of Jesus because the condemnation cannot attack Jesus. But see what Jesus did verse 2. He says, and because you belong to him, the power of life-giving spirit, this is what we call spirituality, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. And you see that both of them have power. The power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin. So what am I trying to say? Spirituality is not something you can do mentally because it has power. I wish not to sin. It's my utmost desire as a human being to not lust, to not lie, to not fornicate, to not steal, to not keep malice. But I can't attain it until the power of the life-giving spirit is at work. At best, I will be a determining, I will be a determinant follower or a determinant sinner. I will determine not to, but I will end up doing it. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. That before we knew that we were going to be today, someone 2,000 years ago made a singular decision to say, you know what? These guys will need saving. I will take their place. Can we say thank you, Jesus? So because of that, there is the ability to live above sin. Next verse. It says the laws of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. It was not just a blood game. Conversations moved from just having blood to having a certain type of blood. And I dare say that because of the fallen nature of man that happened when we naturally came into the world as sinners, your blood could not do it. Your blood could not, could not cover for the sins of your brother. Your mother's blood could not cover for your sins. Not even the bloods of goats. A type of blood was needed. A type of blood that was clean that was free of guilt, that had lived all the life that you would live but would not sin. A life that can justify that on earth I have dominion over sin. That is the type of blood that washes clean. And I'm sorry, none of us can give that type of blood by ourselves. Because carnality would always want to conform to the things of the world. You would always want to be excited by the things that, you know, the world is calling exciting. You would always want to be the hip gang. You would always want to partner with them because it is sweet to the flesh. And God is saying that for me to keep you safe and to keep that sin not having dominion over you, something superior must come. So he chose to die. And he says he sent his son, his own son, in body like the bodies of we sinners. In that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son, say the last word, as a, guys, what you benefit costs blood. What you freely enjoy cost blood.
So I'm here to say to someone, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But it cost God something. It cost God something. It is free for us, but it was very expensive for him. And this will post our hearts into the things I'm going to be saying next. That all this was done so that you can have the power of life-giving spirit to overcome death. That was brought by sin. Verse 4. He said he did this so that the just requirement, the what? You see, there is a justness about sin and it is what? Evil. No, the justness of sin is that it must be repaid with what? Death. It's a just cause. It's a just cause. But for him to now turn that thing around, he needed to pay the price. You know the way some of you as business people, you want to know how your business will grow? When you pick something in your business, you pay for it. It means that you are just to your business. If you keep dipping your hand inside your business and you keep taking it pro bono, put it in, uncle's, um, put it in CEO's, CEO's account. One day you will eat up your salary. You will eat up your credit. You will eat up everything. God knowing that what I'm about to do, if I don't do it wisely, I will lose being just. He says, you know what? I would ensure that a blood speaks over this matter. Because if God would not also want the devil to say, you are not just Lord. So he started to look. And he said, let my son do the work. He said, so it was the just requirement. He did it so that the just requirements of the Lord will be fully satisfied in us. Who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Somebody say, follow the spirit. Follow the spirit. To be spiritual in many long words called short is following the spirit. And that's what the Bible says, for the same spirit that what? Creates Christ from the dead. It dwells inside of us. And that is now what guarantees quickening of your mortal body unto his glory. When you start to follow, you start to enjoy the things that have been written concerning you. I saw a post and I, I found it very interesting. It said, no be say we no road. Now the person will they follow. And it's so vital. Sometimes you don't need to know where you are going. Like some of you have never been to my house. But trust in the fact that I know my house allows you to not open your GPS when you're in my car. Following the spirit enables you to know that you are going to safety. That you will become all that God has said. That you will finish well. That there is no enchantment against your life. There is no divination against your life. That irrespective to where you are coming from, once you are following him, you are in the right course. Praise God. So you see that nobody was particularly born spiritual. We all make decisions to follow. And when you follow, what starts to happen is you start to learn. You start to learn of he that you follow. So if you're coming to my house and you start following me, after a while you know that there is a maybe Tetrazini at one bus stop. What are you doing? You are learning the roadmap to my house. Is somebody following? Then you now start to know the color of my building. You start to know the color of my gates. You start to know the name of my gates man. You start to know which of the floors is my apartment. You start to learn of me. You start to know the name they call me in the environment. As you follow. So what are the benefits of spirituality? Number one, life and peace. Well, you can see that in six. Okay, maybe I just read five and we see six. Five. It said those who, those who are domina dominated by the sinful natures think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about the things that please the Spirit. So you try to see, it starts to explain to you how do you follow? How do you follow? What, what makes up followership? What makes up subscribe and like and follow? Having an appetite for the things that he has an appetite for. But six is where I'm going to. Six A. Six A and B. Six. 
He says, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. Letting your sinful nature. Now, let me break something down to you. There is the nature of sin that every man carries. And that you cannot do anything about because we came into this world in that nature. We were born in that nature. But what God is now saying is, I have paid the ransom for your heart, for your life, for your mind. So do not allow that sinful nature enter into your mind. Because when it enters into your mind, though you are my child, you will still become corrupted. And corruption leads to what? Death. So do you understand what he says? He says, so letting the sinful nature control your mind. So this has answered somebody that says, but if I am born again, why do I still have appetite for the things of the world? It seeks to say that I have arrested your heart. But walking with me enables you to know which turning you should not turn on the way to my house. Because it will lead you somewhere else. So God now starts to accentuate or to tell us that if you still as a child still love the things of the world and it controls you, you will still die. Even if my blood has died for you. And that is why we, in this earth, at this time, we don't just say, I am alive, he has saved me, I am redeemed, and we don't walk in that consciousness. You see, the message of grace puts a balance to it because now that we are saved, we live in that consciousness. So we don't live so that we can be saved. We are already saved, so we respond to that nature. I told you guys a couple of days ago, I said, when you get born again, you, before you, before that time you got born again, you were already working in malfunctioning. It is when you get born again that you now start to function. Something new does not happen to you. No, this is your real DNA. You are just living a false life. The real you is spiritual. The real you there's vacuum in your heart. Only God can feel it. And that is why everybody will continually look for things and things and things and things. But they will never feel it until you have Jesus. Haven't you seen comedians die of depression? Have you not seen big celebrities die of low self-esteem? Because no matter how great that thing is, the nature of their heart, it can only be captured by the creator. So the first benefit you enjoy when you are spiritual is 8B. He says, but by letting the spirit control you, your mind leads to life and peace. The Bible says that you shall have life and have it what? More abundantly. Every other thing seeks to tell you that I can also give you some type of life. But the problem is how abundant is that life? What type of life can you have that can secure now and secure eternity? It's only the life of Christ. It's only the way. Oh, some people are very rich on earth and they will die probably very rich. No offense, but where do they go after that? Where do they go where? The currency of that place is called faith and they did not invest in it. They only invested in dollars and pounds and euros. What happened to when they get to that judgment seat? And what we're looking at it's not that many CSR projects, but the content of your heart. Did you give your life to Christ? That is life. So I'm saying to someone that your bank account does not tally like the ones that you are looking up to does not mean you're at a disadvantage. You may just be at an advantage because you have life. The Bible talks about money. It says, do not put your trust in money. It comes today and it does what? Go away tomorrow. The second one is peace. There are many things the Bible says about peace, but one of the ones that I love is when the Bible says, my peace, I give to you. Then it says what? The way no man. 
So when he was talking about peace, he was not talking about peace in a generic form. He was talking about the peace that he gives that no man can give. It is the peace that makes you laugh in a storm. It's the peace that tells you that you're 35, not married, but you're still okay. It's the peace that says, I don't know my future, but I know the one that holds my future, and my future is fine. It's that peace. It's not the peace that comes after you get a jackpot. No, that's generic peace. That one can go when the jackpot. It's that peace that say your children will make it, even though the environment they are in is not Banana Island. <laughs> yes, Lord. It's that peace. I love what my wife said. She said, the one that passes all understanding. I grew up in a very, very amazing neighborhood. I'm not going to compare neighbors to neighbors because I know that some of you might be more, so I respect you now. But I grew up in a neighborhood where I saw boys become Yahoo boys. I saw boys that we used to play football on the street. We used to do rubber game. How many of you know rubber game? You don't? No, you don't. Sorry, I'm so sorry. It's the bougie ch- part of our church. So sorry. I saw those boys that we used to roll tires. Oh, yes, yes, we did. You know, how many of you know this word, Boris? And it's not Johnson. So, Unade, you did here. Siri, deep is calling out. <laughs> We grew up knowing things like counters. Counters. Do you know what counters is? Can somebody explain to the bougie neighbor that you have? If you don't know it, you didn't miss much. Don't worry. You didn't miss much. We are only glory in our suffering. (laughs) I saw boys that we, we genuinely started that way. To become boys that started doing yahoo yahoo. And some of them started to go to jail. I saw it. It was in my neighborhood. How this incorruptible seed sat in a corruptible environment was not because mommy was there 24-7. It was because something kept speaking that you would make it. You are different. You are going somewhere to happen. That's the life I'm talking about. That's the peace I'm talking about. Was it that I did not give my mother challenging times? Yes, I did. (laughs) I was one of those ones that moved from prayer point to prayer partner. Yes, I used to be a prayer point. Then later, became prayer partners. But God preserved in an environment where people were literally losing their children. I'm talking about that type of peace. And I'm praying for somebody right now, receive that peace in the name of Jesus. I say receive that life in the name of Jesus. The second benefit that you have is that your life starts to please God. Open to verse 8. He says, that's why those who are still under the control of their sinful natures cannot... They cannot. How they wish they could. But they can't. And this is my problem with Christians that start to do double standard. You cannot. It's so painful that you think that you are are pleasing him but you are pleasing yourself. Those that still are under the control of the sinful nature can't. You can't choose. My wife will tell you it's not a buffet. It's all in. That's the one buffet that God tells you that you should eat everything. Not like the one that my sister partook in. Everything on the table must be eaten. Forgiveness must be eaten. Love must be eaten. Fellowship must be eaten. Everything on the table must be eaten. Oh, and I see that God is that mother that stands behind you to make sure that you eat everything. You know, we really don't categorize lime as a fruit we love. Because like, eat it. You will need it. Eat it. 
every single thing is needed. So he says that those that are still controlled by the sinful nature. Now, you know those that we're talking about. Those that know that they can't be saved, but there are certain things that they have not chosen to let go of. See, I want to address something. That you struggle with a thing does not mean that you take that thing as your DNA. Stay trying to get out. Don't accept it. Did somebody get that? Stay trying day by day to get out. Don't accept it. It's not your nature. Now we have explained your nature. You're not a promiscuous person. Don't tell me that it's something that came around the family name that I've yet. You are not. Somebody bought you over. I would rather that you see that you're struggling and you're daily asking for mercy than you give him freely to it. That's what he's talking about. That those that are still controlled under the, those that are still under the control of their sinful nature cannot please God. There was a time I was having my conversations with God and God said, Olimde, for how long must your first word to me be, I'm sorry? You know the way all of us come to church and you see the atmosphere of God moving so beautifully and everything is looking so peng and spiritual and the first thing you come to say is, I'm sorry, Lord. Because you know that there are things that you can settle but you have chosen not to. And that today I'm praying that the Lord will give grace to you to come out in the name of Jesus, to see yourself beyond that thing. I think that was a place of my liberation. The moment I started to see that I am bigger than this thing that the devil is buffeting me with. I am bigger. It became an awakening. Like the one that is begging for Gary when he was the father or his father had given him money to eat. Imagine your, fa- your father going out and he tells the woman there that please whenever my son comes, give him food. Eh? But you didn't know and you go there. Madam, anything for boys. And she didn't tell you. And she will give you crumbs. But one day your father sends a text. That please let me know how much I'm supposed to balance the woman because another month, and you're like, Daddy, balance for who? The only balance I know is Balenciaga. What do you, what do you mean? Ba- balance? Sorry. And your dad says, uh-uh. You didn't know. I didn't tell you. The woman is supposed to be giving you food. Ah! You... You know the anger. Madam, I want all the food of one month. Laughable, but that is how you are supposed to look at the devil and say, hey, you afflict me if you try it. And the devil comes and he says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Taking hold of what is yours because of knowledge. So you are able to please God. Pleasing God will not be a prayer point. It will be a lifestyle. You would enjoy. Yes, thank you Lord. You would enjoy pleasing God. It's not Svela's song. It's not suffering and smiling. No. You would enjoy what you are doing. I'm part of the church already looking at me. You pastor will leave. Where does Svela find expression in the message? You would enjoy it. Then you can sing songs like, You are the longing of my heart, the desires of my life. You are sweetness to my soul. Jesus, my. Do you understand? You are sweet. Can I tell you something? These songs were not sung in anticipation of a feeling. Somebody felt the feeling and sang it in words. I love you forever. I love you. Are we on the same key? Because I, I, I feel like Bros is on the level of Yaba and I'm on the island. Please. My father and the Lord does it. He says, can I hear the keys? Just let me hear the keys. F1, even you didn't go. I love you. We're not the same key. Forever, Lord. You see, to come into that level of koinonia, it must be from a place where you know God. 
You, you, do you understand? We can't fake these things. They will know. The devil knows. <laughs> we can't fake it. Tell your neighbor you can't fake it. So you, you are able to love God and you, you it's, it's interesting to love him. The third is it becomes an evidence that you are a child of God. Spirituality becomes an evidence that you are a child of God. Open verse 9. Glory to God. It says, but you are not controlled by the sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit if you have the spirit of God living in you. Now see what it says. And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ in them do not belong to him at. Do you understand the weight of these things that we are saying? Ha! Ah, can you see you are cheating yourself when you are playing double standard? The devil does not know where you belong. God is saying, we don't know this one, no. He, don't be hot and cold. Choose a side. So we know whether it's deliverance or it's encouragement. Let's not deliver encourage. Choose a side. You don't get. When you are bad, God knows that my assignment is to send this one a savior. When you are good, God knows that my assignment is to encourage and fan the flame. But when you are badly good, or you are goodly bad, kill a man, sheba ye. If that's when the angels will come, that God, what is man that you are so mindful of them? Why are they balabala, balabolo? Choose a side. Tell your neighbor, choose a side. Even God says, I lay before you life and death. He did not say life with death. He says choose life that you may live. Then he says that you are a living sacrifice. He keeps telling you you are living. You know when somebody is not trying to give you a spot to the exam hall, but it's not in you, it's not in you. Somebody is telling you the answer is not A, it's not B, it's not D. What's the answer? God is telling you that hey, 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 Google, be careful now. Nah. Where you are going, <laughs> I give you life. Choose life that you may live. Can we make a commitment today? No more double standard. No more playing church. No more waiting for pastors alone to help you read the Bible. No more praying only when you are in trouble. I will pray as a sign of relationship. I will pray because I want to get to know my father. My choosing to love him is not because of what I can get. It's because I'm only following my nature. I am a love child. And I respond to my father's love. And I give him love in return. Jam your hands together for Jesus. So I'm going to take you on fundamentals that you need to know about spiritual growth. Because for you to be spiritual, like I said, it's not a day's job. You don't become. I think the only person that became ever was Adam. And God saw that there was a flaw in that. Because there was no process. You see, for some of you, process is what enables that you stick to the plan. Let me explain that. You see, the process of washing your white socks when you were a child... And ensuring that you washed it till it was clean. But what gave you sense not to rub, run on the floor? Or roll on the floor when you were in class? But for every time mommy kept giving you white socks. You didn't know how she got it. You didn't know what were you doing? Whew. Process sometimes allows you to see the importance of things. So it was maybe Adam did not see it. Maybe, you know, the devil played a quick one and he fell. <laughs> but not Jesus. <laughs> Not Jesus. The Bible says Jesus will go every day reading the scrolls. He will go to the kingdom as it was his custom. Then the devil will come. Just after I just finished the encounter with my father. And I heard like, a, the boy said, like a dove, this is my son, a woman well pleased. Then the spirit of God will lead me to the wilderness. Then one person will say, if you are the son of God, turn stone to bread. What did they just say the last time? Uh -uh. Do, you, do you think I'm I'm trying to be like, I really need to be. We are global in this church. Let's not be doing like local people. Like, and, and God will be like, no, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. 
I, you know, I've said it before in this church. You know that statement was not a prophetic word. It was in the scriptures. It's in Deuteronomy 8. So he must have read it to know it. Maybe Eve did not read. As she did not. Maybe. But all things work together. But we knew Adam. He knew. He knew the word. He knew what he could say to tell the devil, Nathan, shut up. He knew. And in that same image, the Bible says when he was going, he told you that what made me do this was the spirit of God. Now take that spirit so that you too, number one, you have the ability to read the scriptures by help of the Holy Spirit. So that when the devil comes, you too, you have the written word to say it is written. I shall live and not die. You cannot tell me anything contrary in my dream. You cannot tell me anything contrary on Todd Milan. The water of the oceans of Todd Milan will not be calling me like this. I refuse to be called. They don't have a SIM. I don't have their phone. They cannot call me. The word puts credence to what you know. It puts credence to what you know. But it's a journey, guys. It's a daily process. So the first thing you need to know is we progress daily in the work of salvation and in the work of our spirit. And how you know that you're progressing daily is by how you are able to numb the flesh. And that's why I tell you, in fact, can somebody, can you clap for yourself now? Just clap for yourself. You don't know what I'm about to say, but have faith in me. Clap for yourself. I like that. Amen. You are better today than you were last year. The sins that flood you last year, they can't flood you this year. The things you know about God this year are better than the things you knew about him last year. If there's anything that this church has taught us is in the goodness of God. We know God is good. We know that he loves us. He loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. We know it. So we can do what? Hebrews 4, 16, come boldly to the throne of grace. So you know something. So you are better this year. So can I say to somebody, you are more spiritual this year than you were last year. And you'll be more spiritual tomorrow than you are today. And the Bible says the path of the righteous is like a shining light. It keeps shining brighter and brighter and brighter until the perfect day. You would always be better. So as you numb the flesh, <laughs> you know when I started to, you know, I, I, I pay a lot of inferences to myself. You know, the day I started to know that I am getting better with this weight loss thing, when I can say no to bread. Yeah. That day I knew that oh, something is inside of you. It's working. And some of you are getting there. You are not all there yet. But you are there. Some of you, you, you know enough to say, ah, I don't think that's good for me. Peace. I don't. Some of you are wise enough to know that there are certain parties that you don't go for anymore. You are not just in that. You are not there again. You know? You know, no, no. There are some conversations that you know that is now is thinking. It's not, I, I'm not in that congregation anymore. I, I left that WhatsApp group. I'm not there. I did you hear? Yeah. I don't want to hear. That's why I'm not there. No. My not hearing is not a deficiency. I chose not to hear. You don't get it. You not telling me is doing disservice to me. I chose not to hear these things. You are getting better. There are certain things that, uh, guys, Instagram, are scrolling and scrolling. And before, every time you see that celebrity and the open skin with tabernacle. Now you are getting better. It was two minutes, look, now it's two seconds. There's progress. One day you scroll without not knowing. Because guess what? There's an appetite inside of you that is saying that you are more than this. This is not the life that you have signed up for. There's something higher. There's something greater. There's something that really decals your fancy. See, ah, May somebody receive a baptism of new appetites for the things of God in the name of Jesus. I sense very strongly that somebody, the end has come to your bouts with pornography. 
I heard it very clearly. Whatever, whoever it is, you don't need to raise your hand. This is not to shame you. But just know that you have struggled on that mountain and God is saying that I am delivered. I have delivered you. Walk in that victory. When you come in contact with something that will trigger you, say to yourself, I am not here anymore. I am not here anymore. Christ has redeemed me from the cause of the law. He has become a price. He has become a cost for me. For it is written, cost is he that hangeth on the tree. What should make me love this thing? Christ has taken it away. So I don't love it. Second thing you need to know, it's an ongoing battle every day. The first thing is, we grow daily in spiritual... Sorry? Oh, okay. My wife wants the subtitle. It's called um, The Fundamentals of Spiritual Growth. The fundamental things that you should know in spiritual growth. That it's daily and also your battles are daily. So what does that mean also? Do not rest on your hours. The Bible said concerning Jesus and the devil left him but for a while. You know why the Bible recorded it as but for a while? So that you don't think, and I, I, I struggled with this until the Lord gave me clarity. He says, it's not like as if you don't win your battles. It's not that there are sediments of your battles that are always coming to check whether you are living a victorious lifestyle. You know, the Bible says that when God casts out a demon in the life of a person and that house is vacant, the devil comes back. Listen, listen no, the Bible says the guy comes back to check. When he sees that you have put to let, then he now goes and now says, guys, once beaten, twice shy. Come, seven stronger. And the Bible says, the buffet depends. And here's what the Bible says. He says, and the case of the man was worse than before. So it is not really that you don't overcome that sin. For some, for somebody that is saying, hey, but now I'm married. Why do I still have the feeling of loss? My wife is so beautiful. That I, I have no reason to cheat, a, to cheat, cheat what? Upon her being, what's the word? Cheat within her. Oh, cheat. <laughs> cheat, I say cheat within her. <laughs> to cheat on her. You must understand that the reason why those things come is because they are coming to check. Do you know what you know by reason of knowledge? Or do you know what you know because you just believe that that's how it's supposed to be? That's how I tell people. So they come to check and they try to test you with one secretary. They try to test you with one auntie in the Uber. They try to test you, but something in you says, no, I'm not here. I'm not here. This is what God says about me. I'm not moved by these things. No. And you start to exercise the word. And that now becomes another temptation that you win. And the devil still goes and leaves you for a while. I gave you the gist. Now, when my wife was not around, should we say it now that she's around? Eh? We sh she heard it. I'm sure she heard it. I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, so as I went to the youth thing in the abroad, the devil came again. But I told him, ah, you don't understand, devil. Only more simple, but I'm not in this group. I'm not in the association of men that travel abroad and fornicate. I'm not there. Try all you try. It's not there. And I fought with the word. And I, whew, victory. That is it. So guys, please, know this. Know this and no peace, like they say now. Your fight will be daily, but your victory is also daily. Come on, guys. You know why your victory is daily? He that watches over you neither slumbers or sleep. You can sleep. He can't sleep. Ah! You have the luxury to. He doesn't. Because he's too consumed watching over you. The third thing you need to know, spirituality is living as powered by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, we've talked about that. The fourth thing you need to know, because there will be many spirits in the last days, your balance must always be with the word of God. Now, this is important. There is a new age that is coming alive now. People that assume that because they are around spirituals. <laughs> that they are around spirituals. That they are also spiritual. You see? No. This is the balance. Let me tell you something, sir. It's not going to end that there will be false prophets. It's not going to end that some pastors will tell you that for you to attain, come and sleep with me. It's not going to end. Let me just bust your bubble. It's not going to end that certain churches will use church money and they will buy Lamborghini. It's not going to end. What will most likely end is the number of people that will fall for those things. Because that will be a function of the knowledge of God that you know for yourself. 
evil will not stop. It is good people that will go past evil people. Evil will always be in the air. But it will be good people that would say, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So there will be many spirits. And the Bible says in the end of days, there will be all sorts of spirits. But this is the balance here. I told somebody there was never a time we heard breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Due to the economic, social, economic, political, and religious beliefs that we now believe, certain things in the Bible have now been outdated. Please note, if you have the Bibles from 19 to 2021, please throw it away because only 20 to 22, 2022 Bibles will now be accepted in the churches now. That has never happened. The word is constant. What he has said is still what he's saying. It has not changed. So be careful about those that give you revelation. Rev, I heard something by, by a man of God. It changed my life. He said, there is no new revelation. There is only fresh revelation. I said, what do you mean? He says, See, nothing is new. It is just how you bring it that makes it a fresh thing. So what we preach is not new revelation. It's only fresh. It's, it's, you don't eat apple because it's new. Like, you have seen apple before. But when you see a fresh apple, you eat it. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, the word of God is not, it's not, it's there. It's, it's, it's the freshness that makes you come here. It's the freshness that makes you listen to me. It's the freshness that makes you interested in it. So don't let somebody come and bamboozle you, you know, I just have a new revelation. You don't get. Can you imagine you going to your lecture and say, sir, I just had new understanding about your subject. Ah, if it's not in the man's course notes, I'm going to fail. If it's not in the written letters of books, if tomorrow you say, sir, I think there have been a misconstruement about the world is spherical. I feel the world is in a square form. I, I sense, we are going to look at you very crazy. If you cannot prove it, you are going to fail that exam. Your superior wisdom cannot distort what is written in the books. So some people are going to come and try to tell you that, you know, in the days of old, Abraham had many wives and there's nothing bad about it. And because of that, you now start to feel that that is endorsing you to have side cheek, have back cheek, have front cheek. Ah, your hell is Jimmy, no? And that man will be the chaplain in that place. Don't allow people give you new revelation that is contrary to the word. And that is why you must know the word. That is why you must know the truth so that I can set you free. Ah. Ah. I remember one time. Yes. The laughter is entering the camera. <laughs> when I, 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 I sinned against God one time in my life, and it was, why are you laughing? And the devil now came. He said, ah, this is exactly what happened. You have left perfect will. You are now in permissible will. Ah, that thing haunted. Four. You know, I hear me. He said, my wife knows. He said, I told my wife, I'm David. David killed. He slept with another man's wife. He said, look at what happened to him. The Bible recorded that Absalom brought all his wives out and he slept with all of them. He said, I have broken the edge. My life cannot tow again. Ah, I was now, every day I'll not be singing, until I came in contact with the word. And the Bible says, for as many times as sin abounds, grace abounds even more. And I took a hold of that word. And I said, my father is not the God of second chances. He's also the God of the third and the fourth and the fifth. Till I get it. Not so that I will now take grace for granted. But grace can reach me. Even when I feel I'm in the pit. And it can pull me up. Because he knows that my true DNA was not to sin. And I received grace that day. And I never turned back. I never went back to my sins. I never went back to the things that led me to my sins. Hey, he me. Not only did I not go to the scene, the leaders, the leaders, I left them. Some of you know, you don't only need to leave the scene, you need to leave the leaders. That should be a quote, leave the things that lead to sin. Eh? AMVC, I put some of you in trouble, leave it. 
Yes. Praise God. The last thing. Spirituality is not for bragging right. Our generation. I've said this before now. I'll say it again. There is a grace our generation has. We are the light generation. We carry the fire. And we launch it full speed. Some of us are covering mountains that fathers labored 15, 20 years to get. Some of us, we got it in one night of encounter. Woo! Light generation. Some of you, can you imagine the level of depth that you have? The level of revelations. The things I'm teaching. The ones that Pastor Selma is teaching. The ones that Pastor Taiwo is teaching. Do you know the compendium of wisdom that is available at your disposal? So that you will not miss it. Oh, such a blessed generation. It's a light generation. But it's also an Indomie generation. It's also a generation that does not want to tarry. It's also an, a generation that does not, they don't sometimes, they do not understand what it took to get these things. And that is why you cannot forsake the fathers. Because one of the things the fathers can do, even when you have the type of gift they carry, is to show you how they labored for the gift so that you can thank God for what it looks like you freely get. Do you understand me? Look at the time of Katrin Kuma. Look at the time of Pastor Bimbo. Maybe they worked in the same grace. But there were certain things that Katrin Kuma did. That by virtue of the war battles that she has fought, Pastor Bimbo did not have to. Look at my wife. There are certain things that she does freely. That nobody needs to help her fight. Because no. Who is fighting about women don't preach anymore? That's not a battle anymore. That's not. It's not a, at least in our normal time. It's not. <laughs> at least in, in normal areas like the Lagos. You know? So, the expression of when friends pray is lady not only on the labor of Pastor Emisi, but on the labors of a lot of fathers and mothers. Light generation. Now she will just gather people. Do you know what it costs to gather people then? You will do flyer. You will go on the street. You do Bible uh, uh, the, the, the history books will say um, um is it Utwat Eta? No. Uh, four square. Mark Fassin. Mark Fassin would be dramatic so that people would run and say, What's going on? Give your life to, lock the door. Give your life to Jesus. She had to inquire such dynamics just so that people can hear God. But my generation or your generation? I know the love of Jesus. Guys, if you don't love Jesus, you're missing, man. So supernatural. Now, let's sing it. Hey, hey, hey. And from there, because you have a social media following of 22,000, you just have to say, like, 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 In 12 minutes, you're upset. It's only 14,000 likes I have. What happened to the remaining 7,000? That 14,000 that liked your post was somebody's five-year revival prayer. Lord, let them see that you are good. You achieved it in four minutes. Light generation. The message of God, whew, fast penetrating the earth. It's also a sign. Rapture is faster than you think. But you see, it must be a generation that stays. That understands the weight of what you carry. And you must understand that it's not for bragging. I think that's the biggest challenge of our generation. Because we don't know the weight, we discard it very easily. Hmm? Please don't listen to the raining song. This is not the thing that you used to buga on. Listen to me. When you carry the things of God, it reveals your humanity. But it's calling you for humility. When you carry the things of God, it first reveals your humanity. It reveals that you can go on. Let me use your lingua franca. It uses the fact that you can be proud. But that should birth humility. So your prayer as God uses you, he say, Lord, keep me because I can be wayward. I can turn your revival move into a financial orchestration. I can turn it into something that would impoverish the kingdom of hell. I mean, impoverish the kingdom of God if I'm not guided properly. That is why you would always still need the fathers. Because like Eli, Eli was one 
that may have been walking wrong paths. But Eli still knew to tell Samuel, when you hear him again, this is the voice of God. You need those people that will still hold you down and say, no matter what you know, my dear, fast. They're like, no, sir, I'm operating at a dimension at this level that I feel like I should be in 14 nations in four hours. No, the fathers will tell you, only me, rest. The journey is far. Oh, le barrier. You cannot finish it. You have to pace yourself. No, sir. The zeal of the Lord has consumed me. Then, you fall sick and say, God has failed me. He didn't fail you. You lacked wisdom. You did not hear. It would have happened to Moses. But for his father-in-law. His father-in-law said, the way you are going, you will burn out. Set men over uh, uh, um, things. Let there be a 70 that will manage certain administrations. Even in the time of the disciples, they said we cannot be serving tables. We will lose the essence of what we are supposed to do. Can we have people that have the fear of God? Guess what? They were looking for the people that had the fear of God to serve tables. Can you have the fear of God to wash the toilet? Or it's not dignified enough until you hold the mic. That's what God is looking for. It's not for bragging. Once you start to do the things of God, you start to do the things that God is saying concerning you, it just know that your humanity is about to be revealed. If there is flesh, if there is pride that locks in somewhere, know that it's going to come to pass. But prepare with humility. Rise up on your feet. So it is safe to say we all are spiritual people, yes or no? It's safe to say that you have seen certain workings of God in your life, yes or no? It's also safe to say these things may have revealed your humanity to you, yes or no? Some of us are angry people. Angry bird was named after you. Because when they launch you like this, you go there and you what? Explode. Some of you your gossip nature. You don't need a degree in marketing or in journalism. You know how to spread the word of dissension everywhere. Don't feel bad. Your nature, your humanity has just been revealed. Can you pray? And say, Lord, thank you for revealing my humanity. Now, deal and fix my humanity till I become the splitting image of you. I heard the quote says, the quote says, it's okay if people hate you because of God. It is not okay for people to hate God because of you. If there's anything that is making people hate God because of me, if there's anything that is making people say, ah, ah, and this one calls himself a Christian, if there's anything that is making people say, that, ah, ah, is this how these Christian people do? Lord, take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Mood swings is not of God. Being easily tempered is not of God. Having a loose tongue is not of God. Not being able to receive correction is not of God. Father Lord, what is not like you? Take it away. Take it away. Ah, I have come to the threshing floor. Father Lord. You are the one that can take out my excesses. Weed out. Weed it out. Weed it out. Everything that is a weed growing together with the planting of God. Jesus, weed it out today. Sulabashi kalabayadaraba. I want to be like you. I want to be every single step of the way like you, Jesus. Till I become all you've created me to be. Ilaba Satala. In Kalabasi Aladama. Come on, talk to God. Talk to God. Now, if you are here and you know that your life has taken a bit of a U turn. Because you stop believing in God. And like I said before, though you know him, you have started to endorse sin. You have started to enjoy sin. And it seems like as if you have embraced his sinful nature. 
Do not feel bad. You can talk to God right now and say, God, I accept you again. I open up my heart that I can have you again. I don't want to live the life of sin. Sin has no control over me. Help me, Jesus. Deliver me from the ways of the world. I want you to talk to God right now. I want you to talk to God and say, Father, Lord, take away what is not like you. And fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit, oh God.